guys. Today I'm going to show you some supplies that came in. And the, it's the chemicals for the film developing. Now, first of all, I want to show you the chemicals in Quantum's Quarter. Um, this is the developer. This is a T Max developer. This is a liquid chemical. I don't know anything about how to open this lid on this thing. It doesn't say. Looks like it's just. Yeah, it's just going on. Yeah, it's just like a rubbing alcohol bottle. Okay, so this is the developer. And you dilute this with water. Average working strength is about one measure of this to four measures of water. Now, depending on the kind of water you have in your community, you may be able to use straight tap water. Um, but if you have hard water or you're going to need dissolved solids in it, you're probably going to want to use distilled water or maybe spring water. Uh, Winsted's water is pretty good, so I don't think that's going to be a major problem here for me. As I said, this is the, uh, the developer, and uh, you're going to be doing that first, okay? Next chemical you're going to need there is a stop bath. Now, I'm going to be honest when I say this about the stop bath. You can buy pre-made stop bath, which contains acetic acid, or you can use, yes, kitchen vinegar. <laughs> but just like the acetic acid, like the glacial acetic acid, you're going to need to dilute this. I wouldn't put this pure right into a film tank. Uh, first of all, that's overkill. What I would do is maybe dilute this, say, maybe 10 mil, uh, like, uh, like 10 to 1. I mean, like, one unit of this to 10 units of water. So if you need to 50 ounces, um, let's say 20 ounces, to 200 milliliters of water would be about 20, 10 to 1, but you might want to go weaker than that. Unlike the stop baths you can buy in the store, you can kind of get an idea if it's strong enough by tasting it. After all, this is food safe. You can actually eat this. This is regular kitchen vinegar. It's all you really need to, uh, some say it's optional. I kind of think it is, but it's used specifically to prevent cross-contamination with, ugh, this is heavy. The fixer. Because the fixers are, 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 are acidic. I don't know what the pH on it is, but the point is, is the, the, the stop bath helps to prevent cross contamination between the developer and the fixer. This is going to make it, it's the most important part of developing a film. Now, this is a generic liquid one. Now, you might ask yourself, is, could you go with powders instead of liquids? The answer is absolutely, and the, and the liquids are more expensive because of the fact that the liquids. But, on the other hand, um, I don't have a very large mixing container to store lots of liquids in, so, when I'm mixing them. So, to start with, I'm going to get some larger mixing containers, but for now, this is all I chose to go with pre-made liquid concentrates because it'll be easier for developing a film. Um, what we would do is, at the time we develop the film, so I said this is a ratio of one unit to three units of water, um, if we're talking about 600 milliliters or two reels in the tank, you're going to need to consider that you're going to need, um, let's see, yeah, two reels in the tank, you're going to consider that you're going to need 200 milliliters of this. This contains, I don't know what the net weight it is, but this is not, it's not really that heavy. I mean, that's very dense, actually. It's it's not light, but then we, this is enough to here, made straight out, is enough to make 3.8 liters of um, almost four liters of this. So this is probably about a one liter size container of fixer. And of course, uh, this is the same size as the one liter of T-Max developer. <clears throat> the um, 
the acetic acid, white vinegar stuff, uh, they just picked up at the grocery store. That's all you need. Really. I get this from all these. That's all you need to get. You don't have to use a lot of fancy stuff. Um, in addition to this, I picked up some more film, obviously. Um, they're all the same. These are 34, these are 36 exposures of T-Max 100. Now, everybody likes to go with 400 speed film, um, and there's nothing wrong with 400 speed film. I, I just wanted to stick with the slower one because I wanted the best grain. But given what we saw, what the way the, um, my scanners, scanning negatives are, you really wouldn't be able to tell the friggin' difference anyway, so it wouldn't matter if I used T-Max 3200 or just shot it in, you know, 800 or 1000. It really wouldn't matter because it's still going to be about the same. I really wouldn't want to use it any faster than 1000 T-Max 3200 because the fact is the fastest shutter on my camera is... Uh, a thousandth of a second. So if you're going to use it, I would just say you probably shoot about a thousandth if you really need to. But um, 3200 outdoor photos, unless you have neutral density filters, you can kiss them goodbye. And that's not work for you. Um, so that's the chemicals. That's that's the pretty much the main thing that you're going to need, of course, is the chemistry, which is why I bought the chemistry. But, um, the other thing is that you're going to need to deal with is scanning the negatives, obviously, until I can get an enlarger. And some paper developers and paper trays and things like that and C-plate. Uh... It's scanning isn't really my first choice, but for right now, it's about the best. Well, let's talk about the um, the light lit thing real briefly from my scanner. Does it work? Yes. Does it work well? It works okay. But the scanner is a piece of shit. Okay. Um, personally, I would say if you were going to use something like the light lid... 35, you know what the skin and I could do better resolution. Really, 600 DPI sucks. It's no better than standard definition television in the United States. I mean, it's okay. I mean, I'll get your pictures out there, but it's not going to be like you're going to be seeing the high quality that you would expect from that. Um, that's just the nature of it. But, um, I think I'd say it's better than nothing, so you can get a chance to see the pictures. Um, it turns out that, given the way the light lid works, I could have done the same thing by just taking a piece of plastic, like a white plastic, you know, put a, a fluorescent light fixture over the white plastic, put it on the scanner, if they put a sheet of negatives, like in those negative sheets, or um, binder pages, Put them underneath, put them on the scanner, and then put the white plastic, translucent blessing, and then put the light source on top of that. And this basically have it scan in the image. Because it can go to the whole scan bed, right? And then you'll have a whole sheet of negatives as printed as contact sheets. And they would still technically be called contact sheets because that's exactly what it is. I'm also on another thing. Uh, I'm going to try this for lack of a paper. If I get an enlarger first, but I don't get the paper, this one I'm going to do. I'm going to take an enlarger, and I'm going to set my scanner up on the table where we normally would put the paper. And focus the enlarger and put a piece of translucent like plastic or tracing paper on it. Focus the image really good. Set the scanner to transparency mode. And then... Send the light through my large straight through the milk plastic, whatever, um, so be a projecting image on the other side, and then just have the scanner scan that. I may have to increase the exposure a hell of a lot, but I could do that. 
And what I would do is I would get a picture. And um, and you can even set the... And I'm, I, that sounds like something I want to try. It sounds easy enough to do. Here's why. We know that the scanner only does 600 dots per inch. But it, obviously nice and larger, such as an Omega C700 or whatever, a condenser larger, can certainly do a lot better than that. Okay? Because it's analog and so obviously if you get the camera shot focused perfectly with a grain focuser and everything is good boom now you like i said you're scanning in the entire picture eight and a half eight by ten 600 dpa okay so a 10 inch wide picture is six thousand dots per uh um dots per inch and uh let's see times six is 30 32 by about uh wait a minute we're trying to figure this out here yeah 600 dpi or 6000 dpi by 30 600 dpi okay that would be what the dots would be for a so that means for a big picture blow up that would be pretty freaking good because you're going to have a big picture it's scanning into the computer you're still using the classic uh, film enlarger to do the to work. Except instead of the paper, you're using the scanner underneath. Uh, that's a pretty good way to do it because then you can still do some of the effects like cropping I mean, and cropping and burning an image. If you want to do burn-ins or if you want to um, use dodging. I'll be honest, I think it would be more problematic than for that application, but uh, hell, you know, you might get lucky. You know, it's, it's an idea. So putting, in a, or putting a scanner on the, on the enlarger bench or on the larger might actually be a good way to scan pictures, especially if you don't have any photographic paper and chemicals. As long as you've got the enlarger, as long as you've got the actual uh, system, you, you, you can even do it under... In the dark, you might be able to do a little bit of safe light, but you don't really need the safe light, but it's up to you. If you already set a dark room anyway, that's fine too. Um, so that's what I'm going to try to do. Um, I've been looking into, wouldn't it be nice to get one of those nice uh, Nikon um, LC30 Cool Scan 3s with a film strip adapter? Absolutely. Um, absolutely, and I actually am curious to see if I can find one that is in good shape, that at least is operable, that may not uh, cost an arm and a leg, because I priced them, and they are very expensive, especially since Nikon is highly regarded in the photographic industry. Um, I did see one um, that does work, and it does come with the film strip adapter, and it comes with the IMAX slide feeder, I don't have any slides right now, but the point is it does have it. So I can basically um, scan in the negatives, and it actually will work with my, my view scan software. It'll do the same job. It'll scan each one. Then when I set it for multi, it'll go to the next negative, the next negative, the next negative on the roll of six, and then it will scan them all in into a file. That's exactly what I'm interested in because... Um, and would give me that opportunity. But for right now, remember, before you can even get there, you need to get the negatives from here to a form that you can scan in. And well, that's what the developing chemicals are for. Um, now, there are pros you who want to try black and white and you don't want to do fancy darkroom stuff, you can send the film out to a photo lab. Absolutely. You can send a film out to a photo lab. They will develop it for you. Uh, they will offer you printing services if you choose that. Um, the Darkroom comes to mind. Dwayne's Photo is another one. Um, so yes, you can do this even without even a Darkroom or without even having to breathe liquid chemicals. I have to be honest, I missed the Darkroom part of the job, especially I miss mixing the witch's brew chemicals because that always seem to be magical to me 
And I would sit there and I'd be mixing this developer and that developer and I'm watching the temperatures and the time agitation and all that. I used to love doing that. That was my favorite thing. Very process detailed. Uh, anybody who is, has Asperger's understands that. Processing details. Nothing gets us more excited when we can get right into the nitty gritty of the problem. And, uh, and so that is the reason I'm looking forward to this. And, and very soon, uh, I'm waiting for my can opener to come first so I can take off the, um, open the cans because so many automatic cameras like Dory's little Nikon winds the foam right back into the cartridge completely. So you cannot just, um, it doesn't leave the tongue hanging out so that when you're in a dark room, you can pull the tongue out and feed it into my Patterson reels. If it was that simple, um, we can talk about the reels next because that's another part of the equation is how to get the, the film developed. That will be another video. Right now, I'm not simple enough to do that video because I'm going to do it the same day that I'm doing the developing of the film. So uh, we can actually clean off the kitchen table, get all the crap out of there. It'll probably be in the evening. Because one of the things I noticed is, number one, bathroom is as dark as hell at night. There's no light coming in from the street. It's just exactly what you need. You know what? I'm actually going to say something that's going to make some of you laugh. I haven't been in the dark for so long that I'm actually getting scared of the dark. <laughs> every time I visualize, every time I'm in a dark room, it's like I feel anxious. Uh, I haven't been doing filming in so long that I am not accustomed to being in a dark space. So I have to re acquaint myself with being in a dark room. Uh, I mean, literally, the place that's dark, a room. Um, but for some people, because of modern technology, maybe you can't get your house as dark as you'd like. Um, so what I would do is something I am considering getting a changing rag um, so that I can actually load the film into the reels on the tank in the bag and then um, go from there. That's what I'm going to consider for now. But anyway, for now, I want to show you at least talk about the chemistry, which I think is an important first start. And so for now, I'm going to let you guys go. See you soon. Stay out of trouble. Okay? Bye-bye.